In part one of Let's Go Racing, BMW R9T Racer, friend of Motorcycle.com, Mr. Mike No, assembled Boxer Team America, made up of retired road racer Gary Orr, the owner of San Diego BMW, Oshmo Specialty Parts and Hop-Up Shop owner Osh Millennium, and myself, Sean Matich, Mo's resident videographer, track day veteran, and road race newbie. With the help of documentary filmmaker and motorcycle enthusiast Mike LaFuente, we captured the transformation of a pair of 2019 BMW R9Ts from sexy cafe street cruisers to what we hoped would prove to be a competitive race platform to run in the modern bike classes with the American Historic Racing Motorcycle Association, or ARMA for short. The ambitious goal was to ultimately get a spec race series off the ground here in America using the cultish Boxer Twin as the beating heart of the series. So why race the BMW R19 Boxer? Maybe it has something to do with the heritage, style, or character. Or maybe we're just crazy plum stupid. Braving 105 degree plus temperatures while trying to hold our own on screen alongside charismatic and verbose track day provider Bill Schaefer of Cali Track Days, we ventured to Buttonwillow Raceway to test the machines and learn how to ride a boxer around the racetrack without dragging our heads too hard. Now in part two, Armed with a few more race parts from our sponsors, we return to Buttonwillow Raceway in the throes of a Mojave summer heat wave for a weekend of racing with Arma to spread the boxer gospel, see how we stack up to the competition, learn if the bikes progressed in a positive direction, have some fun, and hopefully not embarrass ourselves too much. What follows is a video race report of our weekend. was fun. I mean, that's kind of the, the really cool thing, the whole idea of a spec class. I mean, we were the only two spec bikes, same bikes, but the bikes we were out there with, for the most part, were pretty similarly matched. We did have uh, Mr. Troy Siahan testing the electric prototype light fire go by us pretty quick. Yeah, uh, but there was, uh, I think it was a 996 water-cooled Ducati, about a 20-year-old bike yeah. we had a good battle with. Gary, why don't you uh, give us a quick summary of your race? Well, I was excited to get through turn one ahead of you. So, that was, um, and after that, I had a really fun race. I had a couple of moments when I was trying to get around the Ducati where I you know, tried to make a pass and I couldn't quite get it done and had to really shut it down. Um, I felt like we had a, a really good line going into the sweeper and we could just dive into the sweeper. Uh, and, and that was one place where we really had him covered. But on the front straight, he would take five or eight bike lengths every time. So he would lose you going through the S's, and then he would catch you up and entering the, uh, the last turn onto the racetrack. And then you'd gap a little on the exit, and he'd just barely be there. And like he could almost make a move in one, but not quite. So I got to watch that. And then when we got into traffic, we had a couple of, uh, were they Harleys? No, it was, a, a, I think, an XR650. It was a Supermoto. Uh, okay. I forgot what the other bike was. So we got into traffic. It bunched us back up a little bit. I had lost a couple of bike lengths at that point. And I felt like I had a chance to get them in the last lap. Um, but I just couldn't quite close the door on him. Or he closed the door on me, more accurately, going into three. So. Yeah, and since we were so close to each other, my race wasn't that that far different from Gary's. Uh, like I said, I completely blew my start, but was able to get around, I think, on the, on the third lap, halfway mark. The bike performed really well. I think I heard you over saying earlier, Gary, to Osh, both of us had an issue with the bike just kind of cutting out for a second, coming back on. And I'm wondering, do you think, could that be a heat thing? No, I think I think it might be the, uh, the shift uh, sensitivity. We're going to look at that and let's run out. We're going to see if we kind of fix it. We're going to desensitize it just a little bit. Okay. That's great if you can. Yeah, mine, yeah. I feel, is We're going to do the too sensitive like me. Yeah. <laughs> it must be stronger shift 
<laughs> Quick shifter. Okay, well, I think our, our next race is coming up pretty soon. Did Very any, soon. Yeah. Did anyone hear? Overheating? It's out? Okay. Yeah. All right, well, we had a camera overheat. We're o I'm overheated. <laughs> Gary looks okay. like he just came out of bed. I don't know how he does it. I and he's got a beer. Drink. <laughs> but our, our next race is up, so let's go uh, race the motorcycles. Day one is in the books. We got one more day of racing tomorrow. First off, I think somebody was missing from the starting line today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what happened, Gary? I had to bail out of race number two. I got on my bike and grabbed my handlebar and it went like this. So in the interest of safety, I set that one out and watched you race. I had Guardian Angel looking out for him. That, that happened after your first race, before you went out for your second. So. Race two went pretty well for me, no no issues with the bike. Again, I totally blew my start, so at some point, hopefully I'll figure out how to get a good jump off the line, so I was having to play catch up. We should probably practice that. Maybe. <laughs> that might be one way of getting better at it, right? Practicing. The BMW R19, though, is a great platform to kind of get your feet wet with, with road racing, you know? It's, it's capable of doing fast lap times, but it's not so powerful that it gets you into trouble quickly or anything like that. And there are some people like Nate Kern, the... Uh, Nate. It's fast. BMW North America brand ambassador. He happens to be a very fast pro level racer. So he, he knows the bike pretty well, but there's not a ton of these on the grid. So we're no. kind of figuring it out as we go along. But the suspension that we have uh, definitely helped a lot raising the bike yeah. up. I was dragging all sorts of hard parts last time we were out here with the stock suspension. And I didn't drag anything today. I think nope. you hit a cylinder once in practice, you said. And then, yeah, that was rider error. <laughs> you get offline and then you have to kind of drop it back in. So, not in the right place on the racetrack. So, uh, earlier after our first race, we were talking and we thought, you know, maybe there's a couple of things we can still do to tweak the platform to get it even better for tomorrow. And one of the strengths of the R19 we felt was the stability in long sweeping corners and down the straightaway. Super stable bike, doesn't shake its head or do anything that's going to scare you. But the flip side of that, it's a, it takes a lot of effort to change direction. The bike's got a lot of rake. Yeah, it's pretty raked out. So we're talking about raising the ride height or making the, the shock longer in the back and it lifts the back of the bike up and puts more weight over the front. I'm thinking it should be good. We basically have one shot at this tomorrow's practice. We have one practice. So we're going to do the changes tonight and uh, hopefully we move forward, move in, forward. A, in a positive direction for tomorrow's practice and we'll see how we do in tomorrow's races. How's it being back and how's it being back on a R19? It's, it's fun, you know, I, I didn't realize how much I missed it. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a couple of people in my life sorry to hear that. <laughs> but it, it's just amazing to be competitive and to have something that you can ride at nine tenths, feel like you're, you're uh, you know, having a good time, but feel safe at the same time. The biggest issue I'm running into, I'm getting blisters. Yeah, you are. From yeah, you know, cranking the bars back and forth. Yeah. So, I think this guy's cranking the bars so hard he actually cranked them loose. <laughs> that's probably what happened. Yeah. You know, you're torquing on it, and part of that's being away from it so long, because you really need to be gripping the bike with your legs and your, and using your abs, not gripping the handlebars like in a death grip. So, we'll work on my bike tonight. We'll work on your bike. We'll see if we can make some improvements tomorrow. These bikes are designed to be street bikes, so usually. If you're going to race them, you have to make some changes. So some of our sponsors that really specialize in the BMW Boxer bikes uh, really helped out a lot. The um, beautiful carbon body work, the belly pan, and the under tray, valve engine covers. covers, valve covers. Those are by Ilmberger from Germany. Uh, they're also the, the, I think, the series sponsor for the Boxer Cup 2.0 in Europe, aren't they? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good people. Metzler's another company that helped us out a lot, the uh, Racetech K1 tires. I don't know about you, Gary. I, I haven't had mine slip front and rear once the oh, whole they're weekend. fantastic. Yeah, they, they really hook up great. And their DOT tires are not slicks. For a bike putting out about a, around 110 horsepower, these things are dynamite. For suspension, one of the great things that I was really happy for race day, uh, practice yesterday and today, was the bike got raised up. And that wouldn't have been possible without the suspension components we added. 
So in the back we have a, a TFX shock with high and low speed compression damping adjustment, rebound and ride height. We also have traction dynamics, fork internals. So this is the first time we've ridden on those and they, <laughs> they work really well. I'm very impressed with them. And then the, in the motor uh, department, well, Rabbit Bike has been a big supporter. They've provided us with some electronics, which Osh has <laughs> learned to tune. Well, they provide the uh, engine controls that you know, deals with the uh, bypasses some of the sensors and things, and allows us to tune the injectors independently and the spark control independently. And then they've got an add-on uh, component, which allows us to do a quick shift. And it also does engine braking, which is, you guys have found to be very effective. Uh, one of the things with the, the Boxer engine, it, it has a low rev ceiling, about 8,500 RPM. So when Osh added a little less engine braking on corner entry, that, that was a big help for me. I don't know about you. It's fantastic, but it also sounds really cool. Yeah, yeah. Gurgle, 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 gurgle every time you uh, close the <laughs> throttle on That's corner entry. Well, that and the quick shifter, and of course getting a few more horsepower out of it. That's next. All right, so that's Good. day one in the books. Uh, we'll be back here bright and early tomorrow morning after having some barbecue again. from Mr. Orr. <laughs> as a result of the, uh, the drop, you think? I don't think it was a result. I think I was just getting more aggressive because yeah. I was trying to get through that, that sweeper with the Ducati guy. Right. I was trying to get through there and be set up to make a pass for him at the start of the straight. Yeah. But that obviously, that cost a half a second sliding, sliding across the there. How does that feel when you, when you hit it? Do you feel it? Well, it makes a lot of noise. It does. Yeah, yeah. Did you have a good view of my, my uh, slide through the uh, sweeper? Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't catch that. I was but, like, whoa! Uh, I took some chunks of carbon off. Yeah, you did. I'm, I'm shedding some weight. I think it just shows that we need to... I need to get a stiffer spring. I on think there. so, yeah. Because I'm not even using all my fork travel. And that's, you know, yeah. you got to tailor the bike to the person on riding it. So right. uh, there's a little weight difference there. We had a good battle the last two laps, kind of caught up with you, the sweeper leading into the S's, and we came yeah. up on some lap traffic. And uh, you, you picked the, the better line. Or you kind of had no choice, there was nowhere else to go. <laughs> I was out there. When you went under him, my only thought was there's no way he's going to use the uh, the rumble strips, so I just headed straight around the outside of him. So I'm glad. I hope we didn't scare him too bad. So. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we got three races in the books. The project I think is going pretty well. We're I feel like we're learning a lot about the bikes. The thing that kind of keeps coming up in our conversations with Osh is wheels, or well, quickening up the steering for the high speed stuff. So there might be carbon wheels in the future, I don't know, we'll, we'll see, but uh, it's, a, it's a really fun platform to race. And I think if you had like a dozen of these bikes similarly prepared on the grid, I just think it would be a blast. You know, it would be all about the rider. They're quick enough you can make time on them, but not so fast that you can get yourself into trouble or, you know, easily or anything like that. We haven't made dramatic changes yet. Um, I think if we just keep making small changes and, and see that it's moving us forward, we're going to be better off in the end. I'd like to go ahead and raise the rear shocks up a little more. Uh, we, we went about halfway. So if we go right up to the longest length, that'll give us more ground clearance, and it should allow that front fork to work better for you. So I think that's what we're going to do, raise, raise the ride height in the rear for race two of day two, and uh, we'll see how things go. Cool. All right. Good race. I think it was a success. I think as the main thing was just seeing how these bikes are as a platform for, for a spec racing series. And I could see, you know, if, like I was saying earlier, if you had a 
a dozen of these on the line, it'd be a lot of fun. The team or the racer that could figure out the little tricks within the framework of the R9T platform, the Boxer platform, if you can figure out how to get it to handle a bit quicker, how to get some ground clearance, you're probably gonna do a little bit better than your competition, and I could really see having a hoot on, on these. And also riding a shaft drive bike. What is the difference for you from a chain bike to a, a, a shaft bike? Some of the handling characteristics, how are you gonna ride it differently? Uh, well, I mean, the biggest difference is if I was between gears and places, it's not so easy to just throw a different sprocket on and make the gear ratio lower or, or taller. You're kind of stuck with what it is there. So you sort of just have to learn to change your shift points. So in some places, I knew to drive out of these corners, I needed to be in third, but it was kind of sketchy to go all the way down to third coming in because I would have too much engine braking and lock up the wheel. So I'd crest over these hills and apex a corner and then before I got on the gas, sneak in a downshift. Which normally on a, on a chain drive bike or a bike with a higher rev ceiling, I would just go down to third before the corner entry. Gary, you've run a pro level team in the AMA. You've had Steve Rapp as a racer for you. You actually raced in the AMA yourself and you've raced the boxer platform, not the R19 platform. Uh, sure. What have you learned from this experience this weekend? Well, I think we made some big improvements with the suspension. We started the weekend with new front and rear shocks. Traction Dynamics built us a fork insert that we hadn't tested before. I think we made some good improvements. We got the bike lifted up, and we're starting to get the attitude of the bike a little more on the nose so that we can feel the side of the tire better and, uh, and steer a little quicker. I think we still have room for improvement there, <laughs> but, but the bike's working pretty good. You know, it's fun to ride. I feel like that was the biggest thing we were asking you for today. How do we make this thing turn quicker? Yeah. But uh, you figure out how to ride with what you got. And, um, but yeah, it, we have rider weight considerations, so we're going to be looking at some like, improvements, some spring rates. Yeah. I think that's going to be the next big improvement for the bike, so you guys can turn in harder. And you were saying earlier, just saying there's things you can learn from racing that you don't learn from just riding a vehicle on the street because it's so much more of a high pressure situation for the vehicle. And uh, in the heat of the battle with Kerry Andrew of Hypercycle Engine, fast engine building fame, uh, I'm not sure which class he was in. Was it Vintage Superbike? Vintage Superbike. Vintage Superbike. I think he was on a KZ 1000 or something. Whatever it was, it was pretty fast for an air cooled bike. It was fast. Uh, I was trying to catch you, and then he got in front of me, and I got back around him. But at one point, you know, I'm like, I got it, it's the last lap, I gotta make this work, and I, I think we have it on camera. I had to really lean over to go offline to get around him before Phil Hill, and then I felt that case, and you know, luckily I didn't hit it too hard. So, yeah, you learn things like that in, in racing, which is pretty cool. All my racer friends, like Troy Siahan, they told me about that. Somehow you're doing 207s in a track day, and then you go in a race and you do 202s. 202s. Yeah. Or that was actually practice, so I wonder what we did in the race. <laughs> I'm excited to find out. We'll have to go look at the, at the yeah. uh, results. So that's pretty good, two for two. I got you both times yesterday, you got me both times today. Um, that is true. I think we learned a lot about the bike. We got some things we want to change for Utah. I hope you guys enjoy watching us have fun on the bikes. And for me, it's been a learning experience about racing. It's been great fun on these bikes. Ash, is there anything that uh, you gained from the experience? Yeah, many things. Um, the suspension thing is, was a, I mean, Gary kind of schooled me on a lot of it because my background is automobiles, you know, as you know. And so there's a little bit of a learning curve for me with suspension, but I'm getting it and uh, I, I understand it. Uh, and I see how these small changes can make such a big difference on a bike, whereas in a car, it won't. You know, bikes are a lot more reactive to small changes. And that's one of the main things I learned. Aside from that, I'm just really super excited about really taking these things to the limit that they can be without going crazy, you know, just with, to a point where we can make, make it a nice spec race bike, you know. Uh, we love racing, I love motorcycles, I love motorcycle people. You know, so I kind of feel part of it is I just want to like participate and I want to like kind of pay it forward in some ways. I've been, you know, the motorcycle community has been great to me and uh, so I want to spend a little money and pour a little money back into it. And, we see some of these guys, hopefully it'll turn into a spec series and we'll see a bunch of guys just, you know, rolling on the throttle and grinning all the way. I hope so. That'd be good. That'd be so, pretty cool. That'd be good. Yeah. And it'd be cool to think like uh, we were there from, you know, the, from the start, start of it. Stay tuned. Hopefully we'll have some good coverage for you from Utah. And then uh, Barber 
the big vintage festival, which we're all excited of going to in October. So Absolutely. stay tuned for that and right here on Motorcycle.com. Thanks, guys. Sure, and come back soon to Motorcycle.com's YouTube channel for part three of Let's Go Racing BMW R9T Racer for armor race coverage from the beautiful Utah Motorsports Campus facility and to see if Boxer Team America was able to successfully grow our ranks. Thanks for watching.